is Johanna Neen here. I have a quick question for you. What has old cars, lots of mini donuts, lots of really dedicated car fixer-uppers, and license plates with the word Norbert on it? You guessed it. It is the Downtown Car Show in Hastings on Saturday evenings. We are here. And let me tell you something, I know nothing about cars, so I think this is going to be a very educational experience for me. Hopefully you can learn something too. Let's go check it out. Hello Hastings, we are here with Ray and he happens to own this fine piece of machinery and you will refer to this as a truck. This is a truck, correct? Right. It's, uh, the body's a 63 Dodge model M37. It was called by the Army a weapons carrier. A weapons carrier. So should I be afraid right now? <laughs> there are no weapons in it. <laughs> no weapons in it right now. Okay, safe. We're good. We're good. Okay, so can you tell me about the history of this truck? The, the truck is, the body is the only part that's 63. The, it's sitting on a 90 Dodge three-quarter ton pickup chassis with a Cummins diesel, automatic transmission, and a four-wheel drive, of course. All right, so the only thing I understood about that was four-wheel drive. So can you kind of break that down for, for us lesser <laughs> folks here? <laughs> well, Cummins was a very popular uh, diesel engine in pickups in the, from 88 on. So they're still making them, in, but the, these are the earlier mechanical ones. They're more preferred than, by some people than the newer electronic injected ones. Okay, so is this a part of, uh, like, what branch of the military? The Army, the Navy? I, Navy is ships, I suppose, so Army or... I think they all had them. Army, Navy, and Marines all used this. Uh, it was basically a everyday pickup truck to the military. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. Okay, so you would just see these driving around? Right. Okay. They weren't uh, very often used for weapons like machine gun or anything like that. Okay, so can you give me a little tour around here? What do we got going on here? Well, when I got this, it was a badly rusted out junk. Somebody had already stripped all the ma main parts off of it. And the engine was stuck, I mean, it rusted up. It was never gonna run again. The gas well, I think it is gonna run again. Well, that was a different engine. <laughs> uh, the gas tank, carburetor, uh, generator starter, uh, almost everything that was usable was stripped out of it badly rusted big holes in it this part up here the cowling had big holes in it so I knew from the start I had you had your work cut out for you didn't well, you were, most of the mechanical parts were either no good or already gone for parts for somebody else so I decided right away to put it on a later model chassis with a, a automatic transmission awesome well this truck really stands out here at the car show here down in Hastings so did you serve in the army yes I was in the army uh, a uh, year in Vietnam, uh, 4.2 inch mortars, and this uh, little rifle with a blue background is a combat infantry badge. Wow, okay, so you would drive this thing around and... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of fun because I never rode in one of these when I was in the Army. But now you just like to fix them up and show them off? Yep. One firebase uh, where I was stationed with the 4.2 inch mortars was one of the few that had roads and there was one of these parked with a sandbag perimeter to protect it. Well, we started getting incoming artillery, so I ran out with my rifle, jumped in the, next to the truck, and after a while I sat there and thought, well, this is stupid. That's going to be a target for an RPG. And if that goes, I'm toast too. <laughs> well, it looks like you definitely earned that blue pin. Well, thank you for showing me around your truck. It was a pleasure. So we are here with Rick and he actually built the car, the exact car that I asked my parents for when I turned 16 years old. It showed up, it showed up here at the Hastings Car Show down here. So tell me about this car. This is unlike anything I've actually ever seen before. It's a, a 1932 Chevrolet and it was a stock car in the late 60s in Nebraska. Okay. And when we, when we got it, it had just a shell with no floor, no firewall and so so pretty unsafe to drive. Pretty safe to say it was. <laughs> it wasn't even. It wasn't even drivable. There was no motor. It was nothing. All we had was the tin shell. Okay, so maybe you could go Flintstones and kind of run it, run yeah, it down yeah, the street. It was a. It was a toy box for my daughter for a little while. <laughs> so yeah, they built the whole thing from scratch. Built the frame. Built the frame from scratch. It was a motor we took out of another car. We put that in there. Transmissions was out of a. 
out of a, uh, like about a 75 Impala. The rear end's actually out of a, a 67, you know, Chrysler. So this is this is the mutt, the mutt of all cars. It's, it's, it's a mutt. I mean, it, it could be a, you know, it could be a Johnny Cash song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were saying that over a thousand hours of work went into building what, what this car. Building the, the, the combination of these three cars. Uh, the, these two trucks and this car here. This this car, I would say we had you know in the vicinity of about 500 hours into it. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's got a hand-built center console. The gas tank was actually out of a tractor. The uh, it's got an overhead console. It's all built out of diamond plate steel and re-rod. It's got all working gauges in it. It's got a stereo system in it. The uh, the speaker boxes are actually made out of uh, semi-exhaust pipe. Wow, so there's a lot of innovation that went into building this. Okay, so we have... So see, here's the thing. The motor is actually a 1955 Chevrolet. Okay, so but it's a 1932 vehicle. Yep, the, the shell of the vehicle is a 1932. Wow, okay, so that's how old. I'm not very good at math. So in 2032, it'll be 100 years old. That's how I'm going to figure that one out. Right, yep. <laughs> it's old. Yeah, it's a, it would just... It's just a ton of hours. You just just kept building and kept adding things and kept getting one thing to work to the other. The the, the whole steering system was out of another car that we did some other work on. That we upgraded that to a power steering system car, and so we made all the brackets and just made that steering gear fit this car. It's so a steering's actually it's actually a steering gear that would be like for a Mustang. For a Mustang, okay. So this is basically a 1932 Mustang. No, it's got a, no, no, not, it ain't no Ford. But the only Ford it's got is the steering gear. We ain't giving Ford no credit. No. Okay, okay. I see where his loyalties lie here. Okay, so Rick also built these two vehicles over here. So we're going to go take a look at these. Okay, so these are two trucks that we have here. Yep, this is a, this is a 48 Chevy pickup. It was a six-volt system. Originally had a six-cylinder engine with a manual transmission. And so we... Took the whole front end, all the fenders took the whole front end off down to the bare frame to uh, put a Chevy 350 in it, put an overdrive transmission in it. Took the whole suspension out from underneath it to put a rack of pinion steering, power brakes, power steering. I mean, we, it's got a full wiring, full complete wiring harness converted over to 12 volts. And so there's not a stitch of wire in either one of these vehicles that was ever in there from the fact. Wow. Okay. So do you do this by yourself? Do you work on these as kind of a hobby or do you have a team that works with you? No, we actually have a shop that we, it's an auto shop that we worked on all modern vehicles and we started working on some of these vehicles and people see you working on this. Oh, we can do this, you can do that. And it kind of snowballed into, can you build me that? So, and this is what you ended up with. And so that's what we end up with. So we, you know, we work on modern day vehicles, but we, we work on a lot of this stuff too because there's there's definitely a market for it because people, you know, we got people coming. You know, we just had a car hauled in from uh, from out of state just the other day that uh, a 1929 Model T that it literally came in boxes of parts, and he says, "Make it work, fix it. it. It's like Legos. Yep, yeah, make it run." So, well, we'll make it run. <laughs> we'll make it run. We'll make it work. Okay, well, this is really cool. Thank you for letting me talk to you about this. Okay, it was nice to meet you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All righty, so we are here with Dan, and he has this really cool car. So I can tell you, I was born in 1995, and any era that you were born into, this would be a cool car to cruise through Hastings with. Basically any era. So can you tell me about this cool car? Sure, it's a 1958 Ford Fairlane 500 Skyliner Hideaway Hardtop, retractable. Uh, the production was less than 20,000 of them in 1958, and it retailed for about $4,200 with no options. $4,200, wow. And about uh, maybe 48 with a few options. I wish cars costed that much now, oh my goodness. And um, I've had it for 19 years, and it's my dream car. Your dream car? So is it a family car? Nope. Uh-uh. Bought it 19 years ago. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Do you think it'll end up being a family car, kind of an heirloom? I hope so. I hope my nieces and nephews will take over when I'm no longer can drive it. Okay. So I heard there's some cool automatic things that can happen with this vehicle. Would you like to give us a little demonstration? I don't know what's about to happen. It could start singing. It could start moving oh hello it's gonna dance it's gonna dance for us look at that and that's just with the press of a button oh, 
cool. Oh, it just started raining, Hastings. Let's push a button and make the car top go down. The sun came out. <laughs> We're gonna put the car top right back down. Cool, so these are leather seats, I see. Vinyl, vinyl seats. It, it's only a Ford, okay, okay, gotcha. And the cool dice in there, symbolizing we're rolling the dice, we're living on the edge in this cool car. So can you tell me more about the make and the model of this car? It's the top end that Ford put out. Um, they only made it for three years, 57, 58, and 59. And then when 60 rolled around, they wanted to start a new decade and totally redesigned the cars. So the retractable was thrown out. Okay, okay, so only three years of production, so there were only a certain amount of these made. Yep, less than 20,000 each year. Less than 20,000 each year, okay. So this is a pretty pretty rare car. Very rare, yep. Very special, family car, very rare car, very cool, very cool color, and it dances for you when you push yep. a button. Torch red and colonial white. Torch red and colonial white. Factory Ford colors for 1958. Okay, I'm gonna have to add that into my color wheel. This is awesome, this is a really cool car. Thank you so much for letting us talk to you. All right, Hastings, so this generally would not fit the criteria for the downtown car show we have here, but look at this thing. Walking up to it, I kind of was getting the feel that it would be called the Intimidator or something like that, but never fear, we have a name, Never Enough. Never E enough. okay, so that's just kind of a testament to the fact that maybe a lot of times less is not necessarily more. Look at this thing. We cannot find the owner, but this is something too cool to pass up. I think it's kind of like two motorcycles put into one here. We have a nice grenade shifter. Nobody's gonna get in a fight with this thing, my goodness. Well, I would like to tell you all about the make and model and calibrator and engine, but I don't even know what half of these words mean. So I think I'm gonna have to leave that up to the owner if we can find it, but this is definitely really cool. A sight to see down here in Hastings. A lot of people are really enjoying it. This is something else. Okay, Hastings, we are here with Tony, the owner of this blue muscle car. This is a muscle car, correct? Yep. Okay, so I just want to take a moment to show you, compare muscles here. I think, I think I got him beat here in the muscle car situation here, but this is a really, really cool car. Do you want to tell me a little bit about it? Uh, it's a 66 Chevelle. Okay, yeah. 66 Chevelle. So, let's see here. Yes, I would definitely let someone pick me up on a first date in this car. This is a great, great car. Okay, so did you restore it? Did you buy it? I bought it. I've had it about five years. I've did a lot of stuff to it, but uh, new carpet, took the motor apart. Um, I've raced it a couple times. Oh, you've raced it? Okay, successfully? Unsuccessfully? Yeah, successfully. Didn't crash, at least. Didn't crash? Okay, rule number one of racing, don't crash. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty fun. It's it's uh it's pretty fast. It, it ran about uh, 11 six and a quarter, so it's about 130 miles an hour. 130 miles an hour. I got a speeding ticket once, but I was only going 85. So. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty fun. Pretty fun. It's a fun car. It sounds pretty cool. And fun to drive around. It's that big rev. You can rev your engine pretty loud. Uh, not too much. It's it's kind of loud, but. But yeah, it's, 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 it's fun. It's just fun to tool around, drive around. Okay, so have you been to the car show before? Yeah, yeah, about this, about three times on this year. So we go to North St. Paul too. They have it every Friday. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, so do you want to show me around here a little bit? Sure, sure. So it's, you know, it's 50 years old, almost like me. <laughs> 50 years old, okay. Yeah, so here's pretty nice. So say I put new carpet in, uh, put some new dash pieces in there. Um, it's, it's, uh, and then uh, the motor and stuff is pretty fun. So the motor is, it's pretty huge as you can tell, it's, it's, a, it's a big block. Yeah, I don't know a lot about motors and engines, but this thing looks pretty nice to me, guys. Yeah, it's a 481 big block, so it's a 454 that's bored out 125. So people usually bored out about 60, but this one's bored out 125. Okay, okay. So, so it's crazy how much is bored out. So. Okay, so do you drive this thing around regularly or is this kind of just for fun? Just on the weekend, that's it. Just on, this is a weekend car, okay. Plus, I, I wish I could have a week car and a weekend car. Plus I can't really afford the gas. Yeah, 
<laughs> uh, that's understandable. Five miles a gallon, and I go to the airport to get the gas. Five miles to the gallon. Okay. I get, I get uh, gas at the airport. It's about five bucks a gallon. It's like a hundred low lead. So. Okay. And this is this is a typical noise that we have during interviews here. Now that is how you leave the car show, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for letting us interview you. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you. So we are here with Terrence, AKA Terry, and he has this wonderful mint green colored car that we have over here. And so would you like to fill me in? What's going on with this car right now? Make and model? This is a California car. It's a 69 uh, uh, sports satellite, which is a step up from a Roadrunner. Roadrunners are really popular. And this came from California. It's got a Dunn 440 in it, uh, a 727 tranny, automatic transmission. It's got a locker rear end. It's got a shift light. It's got a you know a new interior. It's never had rust on it. It's so just a never had rust on it. No. So this, yeah. this thing is literally perfect. Oh yeah, it's 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 a it's a nice car from California. I didn't do it, but I bought it about five years ago, and uh, I've kept it up and done some work on it and stuff like that. It's it, it makes it. If you got a car like that, you got to take care. You got to show it off, right? You well, got to show you it. You got to take care of them too. If you don't take care of them and put the money into them, if it needs it, you don't have anything. They aren't worth anything. So. And I don't know what color that is. He told me it was from a... It reminds me of mint chocolate chip, so it's making me really hungry, but I think it's really pretty. Well, okay. Okay. We just we just uh, found out the color. It's a mint chocolate chip. Thank you, Johanna from HCTV. Okay. So, um, I hear from Terrence that this car has gotten some airtime before as well. In North St. Paul, yeah. In it's, North St. Paul? It's been, yeah, if you go on Google, if you go on Google, you can, you can see it uh, was pictured in uh, driving through and stuff like that. I Because I go to North St. Paul every week and I come here quite often anyhow. So Quite often? Okay, so we have this car and car shows on Fridays, car shows on Saturdays. Yeah, Panaprog Cruise and uh, uh, Back to the 50s. I got a couple cars. Just can't go into Back to the 50s because it's not old enough. Well, neither am I, but I'm still here. So, <laughs> well, this is really awesome. Thank you for letting me uh, take a little peek into your car. Alrighty Hastings, so we are winding down our program here and we thought what better way to end our show here than to meet the man who has single-handedly been serenading us with his country music this entire show. So atop the noise of all the rumbling cars, we have Gary Fender. Ironic because yes, Fender, I like yeah. that. I like that reference you with have there. With all these Fenders around here. With yeah. all these Fenders around here, yes, has been singing for us. Would you like to tell me what, what you do here? You just sing or do you come every weekend? We're here every weekend that they have the car show. We set up and uh, Bella Vista is nice enough to let us get a little power off of their building there and they turn into uh, good friends for us, I guess. Maybe that's what I want to say. And they have good food over there is what I hear. They do. They do. I, I, I have eaten over there and it is a good every time I've eaten there so now we do a lot of hooting and hollering here and make a lot of noise and we do take requests and uh, my wife and I we are called the Fenders and we've been doing this for quite a few years now it's uh, our band is is uh, slowly kind of getting older and I'm not getting any older but my band did and uh, so we had to kind of let them in the ground a little bit but uh, makes sense makes uh, sense we're trying to pick up a few more people to have a band and uh, that would be good if we could do that around this area we came from uh, uh, up in uh, western Wisconsin, and we came down here. My wife was born and raised in this town, so. Oh, and Hastings, a true Hastingsite, okay. A true Hastingsite, yeah, that's right. She went to school here, and uh, and uh, I drug her out of here when she was 30 years old. Okay. And uh, she was kind of kicking and screaming when we left, but uh, now I was kicking and screaming when we came back, but we're here. Much like a lot of the kids that are getting really sick of all the loud noises around here, kicking and screaming. Yeah, well, that does happen, doesn't it, yeah. Okay, so let's see. What's the number one song that you get requested? Oh, cripes. I, I guess that I really can't give you a single song that we get requested. We have uh, multiple uh, requests for different things, but uh, usually they're either Conway or Willie or, you know, one of those fair and young, some of that stuff that's country. And I guess probably Johnny Cash is the most requested. Johnny Cash. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what's it? Ring of Fire. I think that we should end this interview with a nice tune, a nice duet. 
Oh, well, I don't know whether you're going to get, are you going to sing with me? Oh, yeah, duet. Two, okay, two you, parts here. You and I. You and I. Okay. Okay, what do you want to sing? Uh, well, Ring of Fire. Wait, is okay. that what we're going to do? How much are we going to do? I might make up a couple of the words, but here oh, we go. Well, uh, you make up the same ones I make up? Yes, what? we'll make up the same words. Okay, okay, this was written by June Carter for Johnny Cash, so that's... I'll be your June Carter right now. Okay, here we go. go. Okay. I fell into a burning, burning ring, ring of fire. fire. And okay. <laughs> down, down, down. Hey, you're doing pretty good there. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. I'm going to make things I, up. You, can you be here in, in a couple of weeks when I'm setting up? I think I'm getting recruited, Hastings. Yeah, I think I'm getting recruited that, for this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we won't try to insult them anymore, will we? No. Okay. No, you we did won't. a good job, and I can keep up with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, All thank right. you, Letty, for letting us interview yeah, you here you today. Betcha. Well, thank you very All much right. for having me. Bye, Hastings. Hope to see you in a couple of weeks.